Ah. Alrighty. Hello friends. Welcome back to another video. If you're new around here, my name is Andreas and I'm a third year medical student at Riga Stradens University here in Latvia. Today is quite an exciting day because I'm shooting on a proper camera with a proper microphone. So I hope you guys see the difference from my cell phone that has been until now taking all the videos. Anyway, let's jump into today's topic before I start talking too much. One of the most challenging aspects of medical school is getting in in the first place. There are so many aspects that are sort of moving around this application process and actually getting into medical school. So I devised a four step plan that you can make onto a master sheet that will help you keep track of everything and that will help you simplify and sort of make this task of applying to medical school less scary. So let's start off with step number one and get right into this video. Step one is figuring out where to apply. If you're going to apply to universities in your home country, this is quite a simple process. You most probably speak the home language and the course is recognized in your country. So a Apply to all the universities in your home country and don't worry about specific ones. Don't apply to a specific one because you want to go there or because you don't want to go there. Apply to them all. It's rather much better to have a choice of universities than to be sitting there with no opportunity to study at all. You can always move and match throughout your university career. You're not set in stone to study at one place. But now if you're like me and you're studying overseas, as I didn't really have or make the criteria to study in South Africa, I had to move elsewhere. So I straight away looked at Eastern Europe and that was the best idea I had because the first thing I looked for was where are these degrees accepted? I found out straight away that the university that I'm currently studying at is accepted in the EU sort of across every country. Some countries have a little bit of a requirement to fit in with, but mostly it is recognized everywhere. And secondly, what were the requirements for me to go back to South Africa? Well, I just have to write my state exam again, and then I would be accepted in South Africa. And that was acceptable for me. The next thing I looked at was, is there a language in which I can study at or study in in this, in this university, which is English, English, English. In most countries in Eastern Europe, there where there are private universities offering medicine, you can study in English. Some you can even study in German and Russian and so on. So look at what language you want to study in and make a list of this criteria. It might be worth adding that you should think if you can consider yourself or you can see yourself living in this country at, uh, for six years, which is gonna be one of the challenges, but I don't think that's so important because I arrived in Latvia and I was uh, very careful about my expectations here and that has become one of my favorite countries and I really, really enjoy living here. Step two, working out the deadlines. Make sure that you write down each deadline for application that is applicable for you, for each university. Make an Excel spreadsheet with a list of all the universities that you want to apply to and write their deadlines in. So you make sure which university you prioritize first and which one you have a bit of time for. Now, most importantly, so many universities are accepting on a rolling basis. That means that applications are considered every two to four weeks. Even when the deadline is in two or three months time, you might get an acceptance letter within four weeks of actually submitting your application. So it's important to know if your university that you want to go to is doing a rolling sort of application process. So make sure you have the right information, write down those deadlines. Step number three, probably the most painful step of them all, getting all the documents together. In your Excel spreadsheet, next to your deadlines, make a column that allows you to write down all the documents that you require. Applying overseas, there will be so many documents you've never heard of, and that'll be an absolute challenge to get. But Get onto that quickly and once you start doing these application processes and you start doing all the paperwork, you will figure out that most universities, especially the international ones, require almost the same paperwork or very similar. After you've done three or four applications, you will see that you actually have all the paperwork you require and you can then do 30 applications very, very quickly. So really keep track of it and maybe mark off each document that you have and when you expect to get it to make sure that your documents are in perfect order because this is gonna make or break your application. If your application is not complete, it will not be considered by most universities. So make sure step number three is the most important. Step number four, let's get personal. It's so important to try and stand out from the rest, but how are you gonna do that? There are thousands of applications for very limited medical, uh, medical study spots. 
So, importantly, you must not stand out in a negative way. Make sure that your documents are easy to read, easy to find, that all the fonts are the same, that the writing size is the same, and that it is a pleasure to page through your documents. And then let's talk about motivation. Most universities do not have any sort of personal interview processes anymore because there's too many applicants. So they require you to write a motivation letter. Do not shy away from being emotional or se sentimental in these letters. Most of us that are studying medicine have some sort of sort of intrinsic motivation as to why we're doing it. Or we have a motivation that we got out of our community, our family, or our friend group. Don't be shy to write about these experiences that have made you decide that you want to become a doctor. Doctor. These experiences are going to help you get into medical school. And bear in mind that only you and the administrator will ever read this motivation letter. So don't be scared to give some personal information. It lets the administrator get to know you. And then lastly, what I want to talk about is reference letters. If you want to study medicine, you've probably worked in some sort of medical institution as an intern, as a volunteer, or as some other job, be it a nurse, be it working on an ambulance, being at a firefighter, something in sort of the rescue or medical field. Get a reference letter from the people that are around you, but make sure that the person that you're getting the reference letter from actually supports you. Because often universities require the, the reference letter to be sealed by the person that wrote it and sent to the university. So you as an applicant never have the opportunity to look at the reference letter. So sometimes you don't actually know yourself what is written in these reference letters. So be smart and get reference letters from someone that really did enjoy your service and liked working with you. That's a wrap for another video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how I sort of went about applying to medical school with these four steps. I hope that they're helpful to you and I hope that they get you into medical school. And if you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like, consider subscribing. I'm very excited to already have 73 subscribers, which is something that I didn't actually think would come this quickly. And uh, so I'm really excited. Leave a comment and I will answer your comments in the time when I have it. And if you guys want to see anything specific about my life in Latvia or sort of life as a medical student, leave in the comments and I will consider making a video on that.